I've no idea if you're going to agree with me or not once you've watched this video, but the micro brand Revlon is continuing to surprise and impress me. When I first started reviewing their watches, it was a couple of dive watches, and I thought they were going to be one of those micro brands that pumps out a couple of different looking dive watches every single year and avoids moving away from that winning formula but they've proven themselves to be quite the opposite. The last watches they sent me was a his and hers pair of quartz dress watches, not what I was expecting from a micro brand. And the watches they've just sent me, again, not what I was expecting from Revelot. And I'll be the first to admit, this particular style of watch is not really my thing, but I do appreciate what they're doing. The designs are familiar, but there's also lots of originality. I think you guys are gonna like these. They're offering them in different sizes, different movements, different price points, different dial options, lots to choose from, and their early bird prices are incredible. So let's not hang about any longer. I'm gonna head over to the light box and show you what they've sent me. Now, when I found out which two watches Kevin was sending me to feature in this video, I really did think I was gonna gravitate towards this all stainless steel version, beautiful aventurine dial and an automatic movement inside it. But I gotta say, the one that's giving me the strongest tingles is this one for a number of reasons. The strap on this one is really, really nice. Let me just put this other one down. I don't know why I'm wiping it because I'm about to talk about the strap again. Um, yeah, it's a really nice silicon strap. It doesn't feel really soft and sticky like it's gonna attract lots and lots of lint, um, but it's sort of pre-curved near the case. Look, it's integrated, so it fits the case perfectly. I like the color, I like the texture and the detail on it. It's beautifully made. Um, yeah, super soft and supple, and I like that color combination, that sort of rose gold and blue. Looks really, really nice, and I actually do like the color of this case. And, of course, with it being quartz, it's quite a bit thinner than the automatic version, so it sits very nicely on the wrist. Of course, there's a trade-off, the second hand, if it doesn't hit the markers, you're going to have to put up with that, and unfortunately, mine doesn't hit the markers. I don't know if that's going to be um, focused on during production. Um, there's no guarantees, like I said, but um, yeah, for $130 for the first 20 units, whoever picks up one of these is going to be thrilled, actually, because the steel finishing as well looks super nice, and um, yeah, the case finishing looks incredible. Brushing is really, really nice. Polishing looks good. The detail on the dial is lovely. Fantastic hands as well. Nice, deep, applied indices. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not my style, but I'm definitely appreciating what they've produced. On this occasion, um, it's so nice to see not a dive watch. Um, yeah, something that is going to appeal to quite a lot of people. I think there's going to be quite a few people out there that like these, actually. But I do suspect the vast majority of people will actually prefer the automatic version. Um, yeah, it is going to be heavier, thicker, of course. Um, but the bracelet, I know it's a prototype, but it does seem to be very nicely finished still. I mean, the finishing on the full production watches is only going to be better than it is on the prototypes. And I've got to say, um, the finishing on this prototype looks to be full production level. Butterfly clasp, which I get for this particular watch. It's not a dive watch, and you've got this beautiful bracelet, so you're going to get fantastic continuation of the links, and you are seeing there, look, two sort of three-quarter length links, so in certain combinations, you're going to be able to get to a sort of micro-adjustment level fit um, with this bracelet and this clasp. I'm still not a massive fan of butterfly clasps, but, yeah, that is the benefit of them. Look, you get that continuation all the way around your wrist of that bracelet. And look at that dial, beautiful, beautiful aventurine dial. The Roman numeral at the 12 looks a little bit skew, doesn't it? But then again, this is a prototype we need to remember. Um, yeah, let's hope the full production watches go through decent quality control and stuff like that is picked up. But the hands, I really like the hands. Um, very original. Second hand isn't particularly exciting, isn't it? Um, it's just polished arrowhead second hand with a small counterbalance but those hour and minute hands are really cool yeah look at that dial sparkly very very sparkly sapphire crystal with ar coating i will test both pieces of crystal i'm going to put some specifications in the video description because i think i'm going to struggle to remember all the specifications and there's quite a lot of options 
with this range of watches by Revelot. So, um, yeah, you need to head over to their website if you're interested, sign up to their newsletter, and then when they become available, you'll get a notification. And I would jump on there pretty quick because if you want one of the first 20 watches of each model, um, I suspect you're going to need to get in there pretty quick. Right, while I show you some pretty pictures of these watches, I just want to run through some stuff that I need to tell you because these are prototypes. And if you watched my recent review of the M3 by Mark Time, you'll know that prototypes quite often don't represent with a 100% accuracy what you're going to get with a full production watch. Which is why, on the whole, I try to avoid reviewing prototypes, but I really like watches from this brand, and so, yeah, I was happy on this occasion to review these prototypes. So the first thing you need to know is prototypes don't go through a quality control process, and they also sometimes have questionable movements inside them. So if I show you these watches on the time grapher, it's not necessarily an accurate representation of what you're going to get from a full production watch. For the quartz watches, the loom on the chapter ring is going to be improved. The date window on the quartz watches will be black. The battens on the Aventurine dial versions will be lengthened slightly to match the Roman numerals. And half links will be added to the watches with the stainless steel bracelets. Now let me quickly run through some of the prices. The watches with the NH35 and a stainless steel bracelet will be $250 for the first 20 pieces, then $309 after that. The watches with the NH70 and NH72 and a stainless steel bracelet will be $289 for the first 20 units sold and then $349 after that. The watches with a Swiss quartz movement and a stainless steel bracelet will be $195 US for the first 20 units and then $230 after that. And then the quartz watches with the silicon straps will be $130 for the first 20 units and then $163 after that. I think that represents pretty good value for money actually. That quartz one in particular, if the second hand hits the markers, unfortunately it's not hitting the markers on mine and there's no guarantees that it's going to either on the full production watches. Um, so yeah, you're just going to have to bear that in mind, aren't you? Right, I'm going to show you the quartz watch on my wrist first because it is so so comfortable um yeah doesn't sit high off my wrist at all and this strap is really really comfortable not too much weight in this watch at all um so in terms of comfort this is definitely the one to buy but of course again trade off you've got to have that quartz movement inside so i do suspect the automatic watches will be more popular and um, yeah the automatic one isn't uncomfortable it's just going to be heavier and sit slightly higher on your wrist obviously but this one um, yeah, I just can't get over the value for money with this one. It is really nice. Right, here's the all stainless steel automatic version on my wrist. And yeah, I mean, it definitely looks like a more premium watch when it's on this bracelet. Lots of light play with this bracelet. And for a prototype, it's been made very, very nicely. So I've no doubt the full production watches will be, yeah, beautifully made. Decent brushing and polishing on that bracelet and you can see the advantage of the butterfly clasp all that light play even underneath your wrist and um, doesn't sit too high either does it actually it looks like it's quite thick when it's not on your wrist but actually um, that case back sort of sits in your wrist a little bit especially if you wear it a little bit tighter than loose um, yeah I like my watches to feel secure on my wrist so yeah I've managed to get a decent fit of course because of those three quarter links um, yeah let me know what you think guys in the comments section I'll say it again not my preferred style of watch but I think Kevin's executed these very very nicely